Hello everybody and welcome back to Crusader Kings, where there was a comment just like on, on the, the episode that went live this morning as of when I'm recording this, which would be yesterday in the last episode. Fish re recommended that we make our son either join a monastic order or take order him to take the vows and both of those would get him out of the line of succession and he's absolutely correct. Both of them would. So perhaps... Yep, yeah, we can send unlanded courtiers to join holy orders, and that will disqualify them from an inheritance. We can only do that if he's a prisoner, though. Oh. Nope, we can't do that to him. But we can order him to take vows. And join a monastic order of their choice. This will disqualify them from normal inheritance, but they can still be claimants. That's okay. But. Do it. Yeah, he's upset. You don't say. <laughs> so our heir is now our 14-year-old daughter. Now there's not a lot we can do about that, except that we are on agnatic cognatic primogeniture. So if we have a son, that son will become our new heir. It is 1233. We can change our focus in 1235 to family focus. And we're going to have to do that, because we need to get this taken care of. We're 42. We can't put it off any longer. Can't die. If we die right now, problems ensue. Oh well. <laughs> I don't really care. So our heir is currently this daughter. She's not of our house, so we got to handle this. Our wife is pregnant. That's actually perfect. Hopefully that's a male. Be problematic if it wasn't. I mean, we've had a lot of daughters so far. <laughs> Hopefully RN Jesus will uh, smile on us this day. That'd be really nice. What can we spend money on? Hello. We can do that. Um, who is this? Do we owe this guy a favor? No, uh, we just pay him some money, and everybody basically gets... Well, all of our courtiers gain five for two years. Or we could just do this, and he'll be a little disappointed. I'm sure it's fine. Uh, you want to marry... The Queen of Jerusalem wants to marry the Prince of Abyssinia. That's a little spooky, honestly. I'm going to decline it. Ooh, 25% uh, chance that we get Lustful. Did we get Lustful? No. We do have Lover's Pox. That's helpful. <laughs> oh, boy. This daughter has the flu. We don't care if she dies. It's kind of actually ideal if she does. Now, if we absolutely have to, we could change over to ultimogeniture. For that to happen, we'll need to reign for a little longer, and we'll need to make all of our counts happy and be at peace, which they are right now. But, uh... Oh, we can go back, back on Groom and Air because we don't have a male heir now. Okay, that's good. That gives us 20% increased fertility. No. That guy can go away. How are the Byzantines doing? Just fine. Okay. Well, we keep carving little bits of them off. Down to 134.9 out of... 121. I mean, we could probably straight up fight them at this point. Okay, we could make our wife happy, and that is probably something that we should do. Considering that we're trying desperately to get an heir right now. <laughs> that would be a helpful thing. Which is this hospital upgrade? Actually, it's in progress. And these hospital upgrades are tech, 
tech caps. Okay. And we can't get any tech. Perfect. Yes. Okay, we have a proper air now. Fantastic. Hakim Senuid, huh? Okay. We'll go with it. He's Ethiopian and Miathazite, as of course are we. Our wife is Greek and Miathazite. She, I don't think, is going to uh, switch over her culture. But yes. We now have a son. We're going to immediately put him on struggle focus. Now we want to remain on higher fertility because we need backups here. Just in case this kid ends up dying. Uh, no, you're just trying to get leverage on me. I'll pass on that. Okay, that all looks decent. I think the Patriarch successfully converted, though, so we should probably switch him over to somewhere else. There we go. Fantastic. Oh, hello. We can build upgrades here now. That was in Masawa. Can we build upgrades in Accordat? I mean, we can build this one. That'll be fine. Nothing in Trinkitat. And Axum looks complete except for maybe the new castle? That's actually very close to complete. Yeah, very, very close. It is now 1235. So we could theoretically switch to the or switch to family focus in actually right now I think we can. Yeah, perfect. So that gives us an additional 25% fertility and hopefully we get ourselves a backup heir. All of these children are irrelevant. And in fact, actively detrimental. <laughs> yeah, very actively detrimental. We could order all of them to take vows as they come of age, which we may end up having to do. It depends on whether this kid survives or not. He has no traits whatsoever so far. Did we? Did we fulfill the ambition to groom an heir? Our daughter came of age. But it has to be a male heir, right? Oh, because we're on full status of women. Right. Okay. But what we can do is... Apparently we can't order her to take the vows. She's not our direct vassal. We could invite her to court. She wouldn't do it because she's not very happy with us, probably because of how we treated her brother, which was kind of horrible. A little bit. I'm sure he's I'm, I'm sure he's fine. He's he's just angry. I'm sure he's fine. Well, I guess we can go ahead and go on See the Realm Prosper. I'm not planning on attacking anybody for a little bit because I want to not have any potential issues, shall we say. The, king of, the kings of Yemen and Africa believe that they should be on the council. Are they correct? He's actually a good spy master. He's worse than this guy. Domain counties receive a significant prosperity boost. Go for it. I mean, I think I'll put him on here. I mean, he's going to be super salty, but we're not really doing anything with our spy master anyway. What about the uh, king of Africa and Egypt? King of Egypt is super happy with us because we gave him the kingdom. King of Africa would be a mediocre steward. I'll do it just to make him happier. Okay. 
So this seems okay. For now. We still haven't reigned for at least 10 years. I'm not sure when we ascended to the throne. Does it say? I'm sure it says here. Actually, it does. 1230. We've been five years. So we've got five more years to go before we could theoretically change the uh, inheritance. Now, we don't want to go to absolute cognatic primogeniture right now, even though I do want to. In this scenario, that would be a mistake. Ultimogeniture would be okay, but I don't think there's a good reason to go to ultimogeniture. Not too interested in vice royalties. In fact, we could get rid of vice royalties and get ourselves plus 10 vassal limit. We automatically got it from getting Imperial Administration. Excellent. That buys us a lot of headroom on the vassal limit. And with that, we could theoretically go to max centralization. How much of our domain size is our stewardship? That's only one. Which would mean that we could change one of these to a barony. Do we want to? 2432. The other thing that we could do is we could take back one of the counties that we handed out. No. You're not going to get a claim on the realm. Thank you very much. Actually, we shouldn't have told her to be more ambitious. Was that... Who was that? That was her. And she became ambitious. Excellent. We're going to have to marry her off for sure. Like, uh... We should probably marry this lady off, but realistically, to whom? Duke of Alexandria is within our realm. That might be a good thing. Our wife is pregnant again, but we're not sure that it's ours. I am sure that it's ours. Actually, I'm not sure that it's ours. It may or may not be ours. We can actually check. But uh, I trust her word. As far as the gameplay goes, I don't care. But we can just open the care info and see who the actual father is when the child is born. Like, it's not going to change anything. I'm just kind of curious. <laughs> and actually, this one was the same thing, right? Our daughter that we had with her. Well, let's just wait until we have both of them here and then we'll check both of them and we'll just see who the actual father was of both of them i mean it, it's not going to change anything whatsoever i don't actually care either way i would acknowledge both of them as my child because we kind of need some backups here Apparently we're known as the frog. That's um That's interesting. So we're actually maxed out on our castles in our capital again. Which makes me think that we should be thinking about expansion soon. Like not personal expansion, but rather realm expansion. This little bit of the Byzantines is no longer the Byzantines. That's interesting. The Byzantine leader is currently 44, and he is quite popular amongst his vassals. Okay, this is another daughter. That's fine. So let's just check the parentage quick. Like I said, I'm not going to actually change any gameplay based on it, but I'm just going to pop this open, and we are going to care info there we go and let's see here real father king of yemen uh-huh for us okay our son is actually our son 
<laughs> and this daughter is also the king of Yemen's. Well, that's awkward. <laughs> okay. We don't care. It's fine. Either way, those daughters aren't going to be very relevant. She should maybe uh, stop seeing the king of Yemen, though. But it's not going to change anything. If we have another one that we suspect is not ours, we'll investigate, though. Just being like, you can fool me once. You can fool me two times. But three times? You can maybe fool me three times. But you definitely can't fool me four times. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Dangerous faction. I didn't expect one of those right now. Increased council power. Who's in this? King of Canaan is the leader. Here you go, buddy. Have some money. Cavalkind in Abyssinia. I mean, this guy's not very popular, right? We knew that. But it's fine. He's, he's just kind of a mediocre king. What are the Byzantines doing troop-wise? 148k. 150k. Currently defending against a peasant revolt. Why is our threat at 91%? Hi, Papacy. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> the papacy is no longer in Rome. The papacy has decided to move to just north of the Caucasus. Uh-huh. Why exactly are you here, papacy? I'm going to guess the Byzantines kicked them out of Rome. Okay, so the question is, do we think that we can grab away Ghana here? King of Songhai currently personally holds this. That's okay. What is the empire de jure here? Okay, so we'd be able to form another empire title. You can stop asking me that, lady. All of their troops are... are their troops down right now? Interesting. Well, they shouldn't be in this region, right? So, hypothetically, if we declared this, I think we can pull this off. So this would be a great conquest of Ghana. If we lose this war, which we probably won't do, we just have to pay him a bunch of money. Like, that's not a big deal. And this will allow us to form another de jure empire. We can't do it because he holds one of our close relatives hostage. Okay. Who is it? Uh, let's find the character. Actually, let's just search by Senuid. And search all. All Senuids. Who does he hold hostage? Because we can't actually see his prison, I believe. I mean, we need a valid CB, of course. Great Conquest of Ghana. Desi Senuid.
she's in the Byzantine Empire right now. What? No, she's not. Oh, she's being tutored by someone in the Byzantine Empire. Okay, so that should solve that, right? So now we should be able to declare on him? Yes. Okay. And so we shall. We are now at war. We are immediately marching in with our retinue. And we are going to raise our personal levies. And we're going to send our personal levies off over this way for now. Um, actually, we'll, we'll reinforce them at the war goal. And then if we need to defend this region or this region, then we'll do that with the vassal levies. Okay. We will go ahead and obligate the vassal. We need an ambition, and exalted among men would be a decent one to go for right now. This is not going to help our threat, but we also don't care. <laughs> okay, in we go. Now this de jure line goes up to here. Hmm, this prince is going to claim... whatever. Okay, we can't assault. We'll have to wait for our reinforcements to get over. Just looking at their troop dispositions right now, it looks okay. There's a decently large force there. Yeah, they have troops raising in in Constantinople, but that's fine. We have a dangerous faction rising up currently. Who is leading this? The same guy. We will make him the Seneschal. There you go, buddy. Excellent. Looking good up over this way so far. There we go. Excellent. We still can't assault, unfortunately. But we now have some war score, which is always nice. Looks like they are going to attack over here. So we will go ahead and raise vassal levies. And I did not mean to go into trade map mode. <laughs> We're going to send Egypt up to reinforce over here. All of these guys, as usual, are going to come to the war goal. All of these guys as well. And you. And then all of these troops will group up over here. These troops over this way, I mean, there's not a lot of them. We'll just fall back for now. The Byzantines have opened up more fronts, but uh, we need to definitely cut down on those fronts if we can. Well, let's just get ourselves some more score and call it good. Oh, <laughs> there are these troops here. I completely forgot that we'd have these. They're going to be mostly suicided. And of course, there are all these European troops who are also mostly going to be suicided. And there are no troops up over here. That's fine. Okay. So we will have this siege down soon enough. Yep, vassal levies raised too long. It's okay, though. We can actually assault here. Fantastic. As well as here. And here. We are now at 29% war score already. That is a great sign. Considering that they haven't even been able to respond yet.
Yeah. We're good. However, it is time to put a cut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we are going to be finishing up this war for Ghana. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And I will see you all next time.